Talktainment Radio Worldwide Sound. TalktainmentRadio.com. We give you a reason to come. The world's greatest radio. We give you a reason to stay. Radio, the way it should be heard. You got the power. The views and opinions expressed are those of the host and guest and not necessarily those of TalkTainmentRadio.com, the management, the staff, or KE World Network, LLC. Live call in talk show. Dial 1 877 932 9766 and join the conversation here on TalkTamitRadio.com. TalkTamitRadio.com. We go where you go. The world's greatest radio. And you're in touch with Wiggins World of Wellness. And this is Stacy Wiggins. And this is radio the way it should be heard. All right. Thanks for joining in. I've got new, exciting news. I mean, when I picked up the pamphlet, I was excited. Actually got a little goosebumps up and down my spine. New research is in. Here's the title for today. New research is in. Can sweating make you smarter? Like, what? Really? Seriously? And I thought about it. Well, let me read. And it's like, thank God I can sweat. Uh, Maybe that makes me smarter. I don't know. I would hope so. However, we're going to dive into that in a little bit. And this research, well, I promise you, will blow you away. But it also will help educate you as to your own opioid system. Opioid? Yeah, I said you have your own opioid system and educate you as to how to maybe access this, how to be able to, to get high on your own supply. That's what we're here for. Take some in, breathe in, exhale out. All right. So, yes, new research. We'll uh, hold on to that. That'll come up here in, in, uh, maybe within this first half hour for sure, second half hour of the show. Uh, focus. We have a women's focus group coming up. Today is Thursday. August 29th in the year of 2019. Uh, This Saturday, uh, over the holiday, uh, we have a quick 10 o'clock to 12 o'clock meeting area, not area, time frame, and it's going to be at the Martin Luther King Library located off of uh, Taylor Road, East uh, Broad and Taylor. And stop on through. We're going to have a quick brainstorm, a quick session. We're, We're going to uh, what what was the, some of the ideas we talked about? Oh, yeah, like discussing the ideas such as this. Uh, how can you gain or have control over your very own health or over your own very own life if you don't have the necessary tools and the necessary knowledge to have this type of control? Okay? So, yeah, there are things, there are reasons uh, we need to tune into to find out that we have things available to us. We have actually within our own mind things available to us, but within the community, we are going to become more aware of that. So, yes, this is going to be on Taylor Road, Martin Luther King uh, Library. Beautiful. It's just brand new. Well, uh, Avenue. There we go. Like the King Branch Avenue. And it will be uh, Saturday, August 31st, 2019, between the time of 10 o'clock and 12 o'clock. Actually, free health samples will be available. Actually, a variety of free health samples. Just things that people can become aware of that, oh, wow, this is available and will highly benefit my life. More than likely, it's probably going to be something that will help you cleanse or detoxify or energize the body. So please stop through. We uh, we'll we'll be asking such questions like, what ways do you invest in your own health? You know, what do you do that set aside time, not necessarily money, but how do you invest in your own health? And then, actually, I'm going to skip ahead. This is a great question kind of further down the road after you ask a few questions, get warmed up, you really jog the mind with, what five things do you do to undermine your own health? 
to undermine your own ha happiness, okay? Would it be eating the wrong foods or maybe watching TV or, or procrastinating? Oh, I hate procrastinating. I look forward to hating procrastinating. I hate procrastinating so much. Oh, got lost. Uh, what is it that you do? Five things that interfere with your getting better, interfere with your investment to a higher level of healing. Five things that really just are on the destructive side of your life. So you list those five, and there's no wrong five to have. Everybody has their own five or more. And then you list five things that you do of benefit, five things that maybe I, I like to go walk in the park or I do yoga, I meditate, I breathe, I go to church. I do things that will help my mind or my body to relax. So you list five of those things. Now, sometimes this takes a little bit of time because some people are very quick to list the five things that they do that undermine their health, and then they have to struggle a little bit like, hmm, I can't say that I do that much. And it's, aha, there's a big surprise there that we are heavily invested in our own demise and not as equally or more invested in our own health. And so that's a topic right there. But once you create these five answers, and then the next simple question is, what can you do? What small step can you make to help alleviate some of the destructive and add on some of the constructive side? So how can you tilt your own scale, tilt your own balance to better health? Real small steps like this, very important, but they get you to look into your own life, analyze what it is that you do. Oh, wow, uh, every time I, I have a this mood or that mood, I go to the fridge and I eat this kind of food. Well, that's not too good for me because I'm either bloated or I, <clears throat> I have to cough because I'm getting a lot of mucus buildup. So you start to tune in to your own inner wisdom. So lovely things like that we'll be talking about at the Women's Health uh, Focus Group. I almost want to call it a summit. Got a couple other great questions. Let me see here. Oh, yeah. Who do you go to or who do you trust with your own health concern and your own challenges? We have our usual medical doctor, our general practicing medical doctor. You go, you're, we're trained to go to them. And then there's those that uh, prefer not to go to the medical doctor, then they go to other professions. Or do they go to anyone? Do they go within? Hmm. All these options are open for exploration, open for opening up the possibility of where lies that healer within me? Who is that healer within me? Questions like that. Let's see, what else here? Oh, this is an easy statement. Just go outside your door. Uh, and this one is, is accurate. In the USA, here down home in good old USA, there are more sick people than there are healthier people by far. And what are some of the reasons for this? And is it necessarily economical? Is it just because, oh, well, they're poor? No, there are a lot of people who have money, who have a serious health problem, a, a serious weight problem. So we dive in deeper, trying to figure out where are all these things coming from? How do we dodge them? Or how do we at least minimize the effect if we got to exactly you know, uh, interact with them. So let's see here. Oh, let's see. Do you spend more time or do you spend, here's a good one. Do you spend any time outdoors? How much time do you spend outdoors? Now there's so many apps on your phone that you can kind of calculate who and how many steps you're taking and how long you've been on the phone and where's their outdoor app or just set the phone down. I, I believe, uh, one phone company has a called a Zen app where you put a push a button, Zen, 20 minutes. It's off. Uh, I think you can get emergency calls or whatever, but other than that, or you can take pictures if you need an emergency picture. But you are disconnecting from the phone. Now, today we need to really consider how connected we are into our technology. 
And that's a further question down the road. Uh, let's see here. Do you separate yourself from your phone when you need downtime? A perfect example of this is, oh, well, let's go into this story. Do we have time for this story? Let's check our time. Okay, we got time for this story because this will help you really appreciate that I'm not all big pharma bad guys, you know, boo, 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 and they need to go to wherever. Uh, there's a purpose for big pharma. There is quite a, a, a purpose, quite a place in our culture for big pharma. Where they are currently is just a little bit too gangster big, but they have usage. And here's what happened to me. Let's see here. This is over a month or so ago. Uh, got a sinus infection. Yep. Just hitting it hard, going fast, wasn't recovering. And then the holidays came in. I think it's 4th of July. And uh, poo doo doo all the things that I know to do, far infrared sauna, taking, uh, well, ooh, you know what? Learn something new. It's a powerful therapy is doing the nose, the nasal cleansing, the uh, uh, neti pot. Oh, man, that clears some stuff out of your head. Well, that high dosage vitamin C, colloidal silver, dense greens, I threw everything at it. Wasn't, well, wasn't turning around. I, I was getting not better, but sicker. So I was like, okay, got to go to the, got to go to the uh, urgency room or whatever. And sure enough, you know, it's an infection. They gave me some antibiotics and uh, uh, what is steroids. Yes. So about four hours after starting on the antibiotics, boom, I could start to feel a turnaround. It's like, okay, it's starting to reach something that which all of my uh, alternative or, you know, primary therapies that I consider didn't reach. So, boom, this was very useful to me. It turned my health back around, yet I still had to pay a price or compensate because in taking antibiotics, you're going to disrupt your beneficial bacteria, your, your bowel flora. Well, actually, your whole GI tract, not just your bowel flora. So you need to consider, well, I can take it opposite that or just take the whole course of antibiotics and then resupply, re regroup up, you know, afterwards, after I'm done. So going through that whole process was a process. And uh, personality changes, wow. Didn't, didn't know that drugs could do that. You did, but, you know, when it happens to you, it's like, oh, wow, yeah. You get reminded uh, uh, of who you are and then who you kind of can be, I don't know, manipulated by drugs. How do you like that one? Uh, so this whole big pharma experience is a story for you to realize that use everything at your disposal, whether it's going to be colloidal minerals, a silver, or a, 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 an oil. Uh, I, I did black seed oil and black seed and pumpkin oil. Uh, many, many things. But pharmaceutical has its place. Okay? So how often are you able to discern when you need it and when you don't? Questions like that arise. Great questions. We have, uh, oh, here's a beautiful one. Uh, do you believe that we can maintain our height as we age? Most everyone believes that, well, you know, I'm getting old, I'm shrinking, that's just the way it is. Well, they look around, they see other people getting old and shrinking because they're doing the same thing. Well, that's not necessarily a thing that has to happen. As a matter of fact, it doesn't for some people, but most people does. And the reason why? Excessive chronic tension. Excessive chronic tension, probably since you were hmm, a teenager, certainly since you were an adult, and then throughout your adult life, you were excessively tight, not knowingly, but, you know, you just weren't as loose as you used to be as a kid. And then you began a lifestyle of more sitting down, less movement, more tension, more tightness, more stress, more tension, more toxins, more tension, more tightness, more stress. Ooh, a couple injuries, a car accident. You never fully recover from the injury you had many years ago, and so you carry over like an old knee injury. It could have been 10, 
17 years ago. Now here's the question that we have to ask ourselves. Okay, this injury has been with me for quite some time, but I've made my body over several times. What do you mean by that? I have replaced the cells in my body many times over, yet the injury remains. How do you address that? That's what I do. I address that. I get people to realize, to understand that which they put into the system to create this problem, they have to undo and do something different. It's fascinating. It's absolutely wonderful. So let's see here. Any other? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Entertainment. How do we entertain ourselves? Do we entertain ourselves at a cost, at a deficit? So when we're done with the entertainment, we're either trying to recover from being drunk or dumb and numb from watching a movie that's probably programming you in some negative way. Or are we entertaining ourselves with new information, with discoveries? such as I'm going to share with you here in a minute about how to get smarter just by sweating. So how do we go about nourishing our mind is really the question. Do we nourish it with a bunch of hogwash? Most of the media is. Or do we dive in deep and maybe study things on YouTube, maybe study things in actual books, open up, boop, 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 read text. It's amazing, amazing what can happen. So let's see here. We have the women's group that we're talking about. We have the questions that are coming up. So what is the purpose behind this? To share this kind of information, to stir up interest, to see what it is you are looking for. I'm talking into a microphone, looking into a camera, thinking I might be saying what needs to be heard, but how do I know? That's why I want you to be there so you can say, hey, Stacy. This is how I feel about X, Y, Z. I know nothing about this. Tell me about that. So it's a back and forth type of uh, understanding, expression, and sharing of information, sharing of knowledge, sharing of a few free samples, and certainly sharing of some love. Love for self and love for all of us. All love for all of us. All right, so let's get into this new sauna benefits discovered. I was recently handed this pamphlet and I'm like, okay, yeah, I'll get to it. And I set it down and when I set it down, I started to read the small print and I was like, I think I'll get to that right now. And so the small print, it says, well, it says new sauna benefits discovered. Creates brain cells. What did my brain do? It perked up, buddy. Improves mood. Now, I knew that, but it's nice to know that there's maybe some documentation, some actual science behind these things. Uh, diabetes benefits. Uh, that was been explained before previously, but maybe there's some new information. Rapid wound healing. Yes, far infrared saunas are especially good for rapid wound healing, whether it's superficial or deep. Increased longevity. What does that mean? simply growing older in a more graceful matter, manner. Uh, creates, oh, here it is, creates the runner's high without exercising. And that, when I had this on my desk, one of my clients was like, I'll have some of that because well, she doesn't work out. <clears throat> so what is this runner's high thing we're talking about that I alluded to earlier? Well, it's pretty cool. It's really, really cool. So let's get into it. Uh, I need to give you some background on the information about the far infrared sauna. First off, I've had personal use of it <laughs> at least 17 years, 15 to 17 years, and it has brought a whole lot of benefits to me and those that have used it. But basically, it is sitting inside of a tent up to your neck, and the tent is radiated with a far infrared heat. This particular heat is super specific. It comes out of these high technology heater boxes at your feet. And this high technology heater boxes produces a small, uh, a small heat wave of exposure, which is called the far infrared. And the benefits that your body go through are outrageous. So let's uh, get started here real quick. 
Uh, we live in a vibratory, uni vibratory universe spiraling out into fractals. Absolutely everything vibrates and pulsates, creating its own frequency. Far infrared is a frequency that matches the frequency of the water molecules in the body, vibrating the bonds that hold toxins in storage. Okay? This action releases them so they can be flushed out through the skin. This bypasses the kidneys that are often weakened due to typical daily toxic overload and a lack of movement because we're in chairs sitting all day not moving we're kind of like tensing things up crunching our kidneys uh where are we here uh, thus protecting you from unusual detox side effects like having headaches far infrared is the most powerful yet safe way to get rid of those nasty life-destroying toxins and restoring youthfulness uh, brain fog is cleared in this way, so energy and happiness go up. And people, new glow in their skin and their beauty really does come from the inside out. The body can reverse disease and generate health when you supply it with what it needs in the first place. And all those damaging substances are no longer brought into the body. Did you hear that? The body can hear itse heal itself. You just need to get rid of the crap and bring in some good, fresh stuff. Well... We have that answer. Okay, let's see here. Highly effective way, easy way. Uh, ooh, ooh, ooh. Okay, it is important to know that when toxins are neutralized rather than released from the body, there is still a residual left, a residual effect left, which also contributes to the full body cellular congestion. So what does that mean? It means like if you were to take a mm, alkaline water, that's a good example. If you were to take some type of detox pill and it goes into your body and it helps to release toxins, well, the toxins are still floating in your body, not being taken out. By sweating, you are directly pulling these toxins out without even having to, to, to do a, a detox pill or this or that. So it's an amazing process. So let's see. Oh, a recent Finnish study involving more than 2,000 middle-aged men found that it, this will trip you out. Using the saunas four to seven times per week decreased all causes of mortality by 40%. That's a huge number, 40% decrease. And it said all causes of mortality. Uh, it doesn't stop there. The risk of any form of dementia was 66% lower, and the risk of Alzheimer's disease was 65% lower than among those using saunas just once a week. These findings were published recently in the Age and Anti-Aging Journal. Okay, what did I just say there? By using the sauna, a group of 2,000 middle-aged men, four to seven times a week, have a huge decrease in the potential disease factors. Uh, the diseases of Alzheimer's was dropped 65% and risk of any dementia 66%. So by sitting into this, sitting inside this far infrared sauna, by sweating, by getting these toxins pulled out of your body, hmm, your brain function seems to increase. It's amazing. But let's don't stop here. Let's see here. Oh, this is where the print gets small. We as humans and as mammals emit about 75 watts of far infrared energy of about at 9.5 microns. That is the, uh, the, our wave pattern. So if you ever hugged anybody and you feel their warmth, you feel their energy, I guess what you're feeling is, in a sense, is like a 75 watt light bulb, you know, glowing throughout their whole body. And then that's pretty wild because it takes just 75 watts just to operate our body. You would think something so sophisticated, so magnificent, so highly you know, able to do things would require a lot of electricity. But 75 watts to run this, hey, I'm saving money. <laughs> okay, where were we? 75 watts. Uh, Zorofar infrared. Uh, uh, the human body, oh, this is important. The human body is about 60 to 80% water, and far infrared causes the body's water molecules to resonate. All right? They start to vibrate. 
This dilates the capillaries, increases the pH within the body, and reduces acidity, which then facilitates the removal of toxins from the body. So you don't have to drink alkaline water. You don't have to take the diet pills or detox pills or the, the, the clays or all those different products. But if you sat in this thing and started to sweat, you would get those benefits. Now that is amazing. But that we've known about. Yet, there's some information we have yet to know about. This is going to trip you out. But before we even get there, we've got to talk about the heart real quick. Because a lot of people say, oh, I got heart problems. I got, heart, I got a weak heart. I got a pacemaker. I got a congestion. I just, you know, hey, I got stuff with my heart. So the doctor said don't go into saunas. Well, this one's a little bit different because you're increasing the blood flow without stressing the heart. That's pretty cool. And your head is outside of the heat, so it's zipped up to your the clavicles, so you're breathing in cool air, and the body is exposed to this warm heat. Now, actually, I won't call it cheating, but, you know, whenever you get a chance to tweak something, I, I, I'm curious. I set a small fan up about a couple feet away, so it's blowing on my face while I'm sitting in the sauna, sweating my butt slash body off, but my head's still kind of cool, and it just, it, it makes it a little bit easier to tolerate. Am I getting the full effects? Yeah. Am I probably taking some of the effects away? Maybe. But am I comfortable? Oh, yeah. I'm comfortable being uncomfortable. And that is a key to being healthy. It really is, and it's coming up. I thought when I read this, it's like, ah, Explained in a different way. I love it. And maybe I'll be able to get that explained as well to the listening audience. Why being uncomfortable is actually healthy for you. A controlled uncomfort, discomfort. All right. Where are we here? Well, let's jump to it. How saunas can benefit your brain and your mood. Oh, my goodness. New research shows how hyperthermic, that means heat, Conditioning has robust positive effects on the brain. It improves attention and focus by increasing the storage and release of norepinephrine. It causes your brain to function faster by enhancing myelination. That's the laying down of new tissue. uh, And helps to repair damaged neurons by increased prolactin. Woo! Did you just say that you could repair your brain? Uh, Let me read this back again. Maybe if I read it slower. It improves attention and focus by increasing the storage and release of norepinephrine. It causes, here it goes, it causes your brain to function faster by enhancing myelination and helps to repair damaged neurons by increasing prolactin. I'd say that's a way of rebuilding your brain right there. But I'm just, just thinking about it, you know, putting it out there. Oh, my goodness. It causes the growth of new brain cells, improves the ability for you to learn and retain new information. Maybe you'll be able to know where your keys are now. Hmm? Okay. And reduces certain types of depression and anxiety by increasing brain-derived, here we go, by increasing brain-derived neurotropic factors, which is also called B. D, N, F, brain-derived neurotropic factors. Okay, this is where we start to get high on our own supply. Follow with me because uh, four paragraphs, got to go slow, but once you get through this understanding these paragraphs, you'll come out on the other end of the picture like, I got to go out and get high. I got to go out and work out. I got to go out and take a cold shower. I got to go out and do some kind of heat therapy because all these things matter. And tell you what, they're going to matter on the other side of the half hour because we need to, oh, I tell you, we need to get some things done here and get back to TalkTamerRadio.com. Where you go, we go. Download TalkTamerRadio.com app to your cell or tablet. Podcasts are available. That's radio the way it should be heard. Stay right there. The reasons why you can sweat new brain cells is coming up next on TalkTamerRadio.com.
For the best home fragrance and beauty products, shop Ash Kicking online. <coughs> Made with 100% natural quality ingredients and handcrafted with your family in mind, Ash Kicking products are better than those other guys. Ash Kicking candles, incense, body butter, face moisturizer, and hair moisturizer are priced just right, and you can get yours at 10% off with coupon code TALK17. Support this 100% black-owned business and get your home and body smelling and feeling all right. That's A-S-H-K-I-C-K-I-N. Shop Ash Kicking online at www.ashkickin.com. This is Al Edmondson, owner of a Cutter Brother Rest Barbershop. I'm calling on all barbers and beauticians. It's time for us to unite as one. We can serve our communities better together. Join the Ohio Black Barber Beauty Network. For more information, visit www.obbn.org or call 614-427-3226 to get more information. Be the change that you want to see in your community. Join our network. I've got the water, energy bars, and camera. I think we're set for the hike. Almost. We need to protect our skin. Don't forget your wide brimmed hat and sunscreen. All right. I've got the hat. I've got SPF 30. Will that work? Yeah. Anything 15 or higher is good. Just make sure it says broad spectrum. Great. Got it. I am not getting burned again. Let's go. Learn more at cdc.gov slash cancer. Sex Code War by Kahari and Aharo. The author of the Essence Magazine bestseller, Race Cold War, is releasing his second book, Sex Cold War. Be on the lookout for Sex Cold War. TalkTamerRadio.com. We go where you go. Download TalkTamerRadio.com app to your cell or tablet. That's radio the way it should be heard. And this is Stacy Wiggins, and you're on Wiggins' World of Wellness. And I tell you what, this world is pretty wild. You know, just sometimes when you hear uh, the, maybe the political issue is getting terrible or the, the earth is falling apart or, you know, you got climate this, climate that. Wouldn't it be great just to get a good bit of news? Wouldn't it be just lovely to have something to inspire some, you know, inspire one by? Well, this news it has inspired me, and I hope it's going to inspire you because the answers are readily available. And so, yeah, real quickly, I do have a far infrared sauna. The thing we're talking about, the thing we're reading about right now, I have it in my office. Uh, actually, it goes back and forth, office to home, home to office, because it's very transportable. It's very easy to set up and to take down. And uh, I get mine from Momentum98, uh, Momentum98.com. That's a store here in Columbus, Ohio. Uh, you could say I'm one of their uh, salespeople, one of their providers uh, for the sauna, but Oh my goodness. When you start to when you take a deep dive on what this far infrared sauna uh does and the testimonials, there is a huge YouTube channel of testimonials alone on the far infrared sauna. So please take your time. I think I have a few of my own testimonials somewhere out there on YouTube and it is a phenomenal machine. <clears throat> Real quickly, wanted to remind one more time the Women's Talk, it's a women's focus group coming up this Saturday, August 31st, 2019. It will be at the uh, Martin Luther King Branch, Taylor Avenue. 
and it's going to be between 10 o'clock and 12 o'clock. Come through, stop through, get some ideas heard, get some, get some knowledge learned, get nourished in a way that doesn't necessarily involve uh, having to eat something. Uh, we want to know what you want to know. We want to be there. We want to be a part of the whole community process of sharing information, of, well, simply becoming well. We already got as about as sick as we possibly can. Let's try the wellness side. You know, let's give that a shot. See if it's going to give us any benefit. All right. So that will be uh, this Saturday coming up. Today's Thursday. So, hey, sorry for the late notice, but if you have time, please stop through. You'll be glad you did. And as I said before, some free health items will be given away. Uh, most of them, yes, they will have something to do with either more energy or detoxification. <clears throat> okay, I promised you an explanation that's going to get, well, we'll try to take the technical part of it out, but it's going to take you from not knowing something to really knowing something. And this something is within all of us. It's the ability to access this chemistry that we, well, we're making it one way or the other, whether we're happy, whether we're sad, we're making chemistry, or the chemistry of it is the byproduct. Okay, so in the explanation, here's how it works. Beta endorphins, or endogenous, in other words, they are made within us. They're endogenous opioids that are part of the body's natural painkiller system. All right, we already have our own painkiller system. They're called beta endorphins. This is known as the mu, opi uh, mu, mu opioid system, which blocks pain messages from spreading from the body to the brain in a process called antisepitation. What is lesser known, none of us know about this, is the body also produces a peptide known as dynorphin. And this is a kappa opioid, another opioid it makes. The release of this dinoprin is generally responsible for the sensation of discomfort experienced during intense exercise. Okay? Here we go. Intense exercise. Exposure to extreme heat, such as a sauna, or eating spicy food. So in other words, our body's releasing something else when we are exposed to heat. They call this a dinoprin. <clears throat> The release of dynorphin causes an upregulation, everything's coming up, and sensitization or sensis, sensitation of the mu opioid receptors, which interact with your beta endorphins. And this process is what underlines the runner's high. So we just talked about a couple of upregulating beta endorphins, things like that. Boom, runner's high. How do you get a runner's high? You've got to run. Can't skip, can't jog, can't lollygog. You gotta run. You gotta push yourself. You gotta become what? What? You gotta become uncomfortable. There we go again. So, and it's directly initiated by the discomfort of sweating or physical exercise. So, to translate, here we go. The greater the discomfort experienced during your workout or in the sauna when you stay in long enough to sweat profusely the better the endorphin high will be. Ta-da! Boom! It's there. You just have to hang in there, sweat your butt off, and the reward comes afterwards. But wait, wait. I'm, I'm addicted to what? You're addicted to drugs. Why not be addicted to your own supply? Because, wait a minute, if you do this more often, will you have more? Absolutely. Let's read on. This is it's, it's crazy information. A sauna used to be thought as a luxury item. Studies now confirm that diet and environmental chemicals cause 90% of cancers. Wow. We kind of knew that, but really. Studies now confirm 90, 95% is environmental chemicals in our diet. Right there. That, that piece of information is gold. If you can start to clean up your environment, look at what's your home, what's at your workplace, what's in your car, whatever, and you start to analyze your diet, you are directly addressing 95% of why we get sick and die. Yeah, it gets better. 
Furthermore, as the first generation of man exposed to such an unprecedented plethora of daily chemicals, we have learned that stored or undetoxified chemicals can mimic any disease. Mind blower. Stored or untoxic stuff that you can't get out of your body can mimic diseases. I don't know. Some, I, I guess some of you know that, but some maybe not. Okay, so let's get these diseases out of here. How do we do that? Get the toxins out of here. So let's see here. Uh, oh, what would it be? I skipped a, pa a paragraph or two. So when you sweat, dynorphine binds to your capioid receptor. Then the body thinks it's getting too much activation in those capioid receptors, and it causes the body to make more new feel-good opioid receptors to compensate. All right, so the next time you sweat, it feels even better, and this has been found to have long-lasting effects as well. Interesting. So to sum it up, dynorphin, by activating the capioid receptor within you, this is what you're doing when you sweat, will make more opioid receptors and stimulate more endorphins to feeling great. When people are not addicted... This works even faster. So in other words, if I w was not addicted on any kind of drugs, certain kind of drugs, and I began to work out, get that runner's high, sit in this far infrared sauna, or something else that we haven't really spoke about, but I've had a, a podcast maybe over a year or so ago, Wilm Hoff method, method. He's the ice man. This man has cold science. I love that. He has documented science that his method of exposure to cold water, ice, and breathing can upregulate your immune system, can uh, definitely upregulate your, your pH, can do so many physiological and psychological, one's a body, one's a mind, benefits. It's mind-blowing. You need to go study Wim Hof. Let's get back to our own supply. We're working with this far-infrared sauna right now. Because some people say, well, Stacy, I, I don't, how much does that thing cost? Over $1,000. Man, I ain't got that kind of money. I mean, all those things sound good, but let's face it, I, I don't have that kind of money. I hear you. I understand. But here's what you can do. You take showers. Yeah, most people do. Or maybe a bath. Okay. Uh, do you have at your location that you take showers, do you have cold water? And they're like, well, of course I do. What do you mean? I barely sometimes have hot. Ah, here you go. When you take a cold water shower, you are doing many of the things we are just now reading about here. These correlate. What's the common denominator? Becoming uncomfortable. Whether it's cold, whether it's hot, it doesn't matter. If you have a preference, that's beautiful. But you have to become uncomfortable. So I said to sum it up, to do, the more the short-term discomfort of sweating, the more long-term feel-good endorphins in your life. I got to say that again. The more the short-term discomfort of sweating, so if you hop in there once a day, that's great. Hop in there twice a week, yeah, that's, you know, not as good. But if you can get an exposure of, as the study said, four to seven times a week, to greatly reduce all of those factors, why not? It's amazing. Uh, it doesn't cost much to operate. I believe uh, 15 cents per 30-second session. Don't quote me on that, but, you know, it's not going to send your, uh, your bill through the roof, and it is so convenient. You can tear it down. You can set it up within 7 to 10 minutes. Now, here's how we get high on your own supply. I'm going to read it again. The more the short-term discomfort of sweating, or once again, taking showers, cold showers, the more long-term feel-good endorphins which occur in your life. So this actually is why depression is benefited, because this is helping you psychologically. This is helping you when you are exposed to these temperatures Blood is increasing. It's really increasing. If you get in a cold shower, it's like, Kee! if you stay in the sauna for a long time, it's like, Psh! 
So you're moving blood around more so than the rest of your life. So, hmm, makes sense. Makes real good sense. So those are the, uh, the new results. Wait a minute. My favorite word, endurance. Here's, here's maybe some new uh, studies on this. Uh, acclimating yourself to heat through sauna use, independent of aerobic physical activity, boost endurance. What? In other words, when you become acclimated, it's kind of like going out to the desert and start training in the heat. And if you run one mile out there, it's probably like running a little more than one mile here in an easier climate. So when you acclimate yourself to this heat through the use of this sauna, the independent, outside of just your physical activity, your aerobic activity, you're boosting your endurance. Now, isn't that amazing? Because here's what you get to do. This is almost like cheating when it comes to exercise. You get to sit in the sauna, sweat your butt off, get some toxins out of you, and increase your endurance. So if you're a marathoner or a triathlon or a person just likes to push their body and, you know, go to the extreme, wouldn't it not make sense to increase your endurance while recovering at the same time? Because let's face it, to increase your endurance, you got to push yourself. you got to push yourself beyond the limits that you created before, beyond the limits that you know, discovered before. You have to make sure the nutrition is there, the rest, the recovery, all those things in order for you to grow from that stress event, in order for you to grow from that amount of discomfort. Did you understand that? That discomfort is that workout, that stress event. You recover, you grow. You overwork it, never recover, spiraling down. So, wow, endurance. Okay, hold on. Your body gradually becomes acclimated to the heat when it is subjected to reasonable amounts of heat stress. This promotes a number of beneficial changes to occur in your body. These adaptogens include increased plasma volume and blood flow to your heart and muscles. We all need that from time to time. This increases athletic endurance and increases muscle mass due to greater levels of heart or heat shock proteins and growth hormones. What? Are you familiar with heat shock proteins, growth hormones? These are actually things that your body can make and do make in order to build muscle, in order to become more adaptively strong. So this is part of endurance. This is part of the benefit that you get through sitting in this far infrared sauna. <clears throat> it's incredible. So let's see here. Intermit oh, one study, one study with those who had 30-minute sauna sessions twice a week for three weeks. Now that's possible because someone asked me, Stacy, how, how much do you charge for a session? So it's, it's 20 bucks. That $20 covers, you know, the towels, the sheets. The, you're going to be in there for over half an hour or so. So it's actually, that's pretty cheap. It really is when you think about it because there is no other piece of equipment that's going to be able to pull out this amount of toxins from your body this safely, this quickly, and, you know, you're in and out. Okay, anyway, I think I need to, I need to bump up those charges. Man. Uh, oh, here we go. 30% twice a week again. There, in one study, those who had a 30-minute sauna session twice a week for three weeks after their workouts increased their time it took to run until exhaustion by more than 30%. In other words, they extended their ability of working out 30% more in three weeks, twice a week. 30% more. You didn't break any bones. You didn't pull any hammies. You didn't hurt yourself. You actually gained more benefits by sitting in the sauna as opposed to working out. See what I mean by it's kind of like cheating? If you can increase your endurance sitting in your sauna or reading a book, hey, I certainly am going to go for it. My goodness. Uh, during the sauna use as well as during exercise and fasting, we got to talk about fasting at another time, nerve cells release proteins known as neurotropic factors such as brain-derived neurotropic, there we go with that BDNF, and these activate brain stem cells to produce new neurons. So we're talking today 
canned sweating, increase your brain, your, your ability to be smart. It seems like it. It really does. But, like I said, if you don't have the place, the time, the finances, you can still get this same type of therapy, maybe even just as effective, in a cold ice bath, in taking a cold shower. So, hey, I tell you what, this is new exciting news because it doesn't cost much for this. It really doesn't. You can do this. <coughs> Excuse me. You can do this pretty much anywhere. Okay, I got a little something here. Being excited about endurance, I can get real, real windy. Okay, last one. Focus attention and faster brain function. We are talking about brain function. We're talking about as we get older, neuroplasticity. There are exercises. There are a group of exercises that I have created, and we're going to see if we can pull up some pictures here that are all about creating brain smartness, teaching the brain something new. Because if you don't teach your brain something new, it's going to the gym doing the same darn thing. Now, of course, don't try this at home. That's my star student there. And he is doing something that's incredibly, incredibly tough. Now, just being able to balance and kneel on the ball is something. Now, this... This is the perfect picture right here of here's where you start. You're on a BOSU, and you begin to start this motion at this level. Now go ahead and stop that if you would, right about there. By using the BOSU, you can develop the muscles. You develop the tension, the requirements, the coordination of how to use your legs. If you start to, this, to use this process on the ball, directly just skipping the BOSU process. It'll be frustrating, it'll be hard, it'll be like, ah, I don't wanna do this stuff, it, it, this, this stuff is stupid. But if you take this step by step, you will be able to accumulate a massive amount of learning for your body. And this learning coordinates, or it comes through as coordination, comes through as balance, it comes through as core strength, and it also comes through as just fluidity, being in the flow of things as opposed to being tight and rigid and ready for our next uh, injury. So let me see. Let's get back to where this is one of my students. This is actually, she's been doing kneeling on the ball before, but this was her first attempt of doing what we call a superhero move. And a superhero move is one knee is on the ball and the opposite hand is on the ball while you lift up the other hand and knee. As you can tell, this requires a massive amount of strength, balance, and concentration. You just don't get this in the gym in your weight machine or doing some squats or running on a treadmill. So this is some of the most ideal ways of cross-training. Of, of switching up your training. Do something new. Do something different. For Pete's sake, are you going to go to the gym and do the same routine that you've done for the past how many years? I mean, come on. I just, I'd rather put my head against a, a plate or something. Bang it against a wall. Do something new. Challenge your body. You'll love it. And as we get older, this is key. This is most important. What can I do today that I wasn't able to do yesterday? And then you start to look at all the accomplishments. You start to look at all the things that you build upon in benefit, as opposed to all the insults, all the tensions, all the stresses, all the insults that now create this you that you're tight, you're distorted, you're barely breathing, you're... You're, you're scratching a living for life as opposed to thriving, breathing in big breaths of air and blowing it out and say, excuse me, did I get some on you? Sorry about that. But really being a part of life. And life is about movement. Life is about exchange, contraction, relaxation. It's not about staying stuck in one or the other. And a lot of this ball work is resembling that. 
Let me see if I have another demonstration. Because as you begin to create more new challenges for the body, guess what your brain has just done? It has learned a new task. And that translates into every part of your life. Especially when I teach children and they learn something new on the ball that they four, five minutes ago thought was absolutely impossible. You know, I would demonstrate something and you'd see their eyes go real wide and their mouths kind of drop. Like, oh my God, I can't do that. And then you show them some basics. You get them set up into uh, the proper stance. And then they themselves start to do that which they didn't think they could do four or five minutes ago. So it's a great confidence booster. Now this picture right here demonstrates whew, a high usage and functioning of all of the muscles in the back of our body. So I have to be activating my calves, my heels. Okay, let's go from heels, calves, hamstrings, glutes, low back, mid back, upper back. I think my head's not touching, so my neck is out of it. Now, shoulders, upper shoulders, triceps, biceps, forearms, hands. Okay, that sounds like pretty much my whole body is being activated here, and yes, it is. Now, do you go to my class for the first time and say, I can't do that? No, we don't get started there, but this is just to prove a point that as you become better, and it doesn't matter about getting older, as you become more flexible, you actually become younger. Your body becomes more stable. Now, speaking of stretching, oh, this I absolutely love because all of us, and I mean all of us, are tight in the chest. We're tight in the shoulder area. We're always holding on to our phones. We're always holding on to the steering wheel. Or we always have some kind of piece of technology in front of us that our arms, our, our hands are coming together. So we're squeezing our chest together. We're not breathing in deep. This creates a massive, massive stretch. And if you're going to do this at home, please be careful. Go slow. But it produces a massive stretch in the arms, shoulder, and chest. Now, this one is a super dynamic stretch. It's like, oh, what's going on here? Well, first off, <clears throat> let's come to the front. The two hands holding onto the ball. The arms are being outstretched. Underneath the armpits are being stretched. So you're actually getting the pec in a different manner, the pectoralis major and minor in a different manner. Now, the leg that's in front that is on the floor, this is a huge hamstring stretch. The leg that's in back that's on the ball, that is a huge front hip flexor stretch. So how many stretches are going on here? At least four or five big ones. So this is the philosophy that I've been working on all along is just increasing your body's innate wisdom, increasing its ability to learn as we age. So you don't necessarily get sh shorter. You don't shrink. You get smarter. You get body wisdom wise. You get tuned in to who you are. And when that occurs, whew, when you can love yourself a little bit better, I'm sure you can love everyone else just that much easier. It's just like that. So I invite you to try some of these things at home. Get a ball. Buy a brand new ball. Go to Dick's Sporting Goods. Any place has them. They all have them. And get one that you pretty much see the height that you are. It's labeled on the box. Buy it. Pump it up. Grab a seat. And make sure your knees are at 90 degrees. And start moving. Put some music on. We're going to dance next time. We're going to dance on the ball. We're going to be ball dancing. We're going to be wall balling. We're going to be loosening up our body because we spent all these years getting tight. And it has not produced anything but disease, disappointment, despair, disaster. What's the other D word? Uh, when you're really depressed, yeah, depressed because you can't move. You can't go out and play. And that's what I want you to do here at Talktainment Radio is to be able to go out and have fun and play. At TalkTainmentRadio.com, the world's greatest radio. Radio the way it should be heard. <coughs> Just how